So my name is uh, Dirk Johnson, uh, and I have not as many names as Manjushri, but maybe more than I should. <laughs> my first name given to me was Tupton Lodro. The second one was Jeremy Trinley. And then Lama Jinpa gave me the name Yeshe Sanglam. So Yeshe Sanglam is usually the name that I use unless I have some other reason on a Dharma. If I'm going to use one of my Dharma names, but today I'm Dirk. So, um, um, today I'm going to talk about, and believe me, I, I'm way out of my depth here. Uh, so, so I'm going to do the best I can. Um, I'm going to talk about the Manjushri Nama Sangiti, which actually probably in Indian was just called the Nama Sangiti, and everybody knew it was Manjushri. His Holiness, the, the translator, uh, the text itself says that the translator of the, uh, of the commentary was uh, Tupton Jinpa, but the, there are other indicators that it's probably Geshe Lakdor, who is the uh, librarian of the Tibetan Library of, and Archives in Dharamsala. So I'm not sure which of them actually translated it. It was a, a, a live translation. So the text itself can be difficult to decipher sometimes, although it's been edited helpfully. Uh, it was given in 1988. It's the only commentary on this text by His Holiness the Dalai Lama I've been able to find. And I've spent a lot of time with it. And I'll only take, it's about a 30 page commentary and I'm only gonna bring you through about page four of it. And it will probably be too much information already. So we'll get started. I prepared more for this talk than any other talk, and it will look like I'm less prepared, I'm sure. <laughs> so let's begin with a, a, a quick practice, the, uh, which, which Lama Yeshe Jinpa is fond of, and I also am. Uh, the praise to Manjushri, glorious wisdom's excellent qualities, originally by Vajra Yudha, and it's said that this uh, contains the entire uh, wisdom of the path. So we'll do it once and I'll do a hundred Manjushri mantras and then we'll continue on. Homage to the guru and the protector of venerable Manju Gosha. Your wisdom is brilliant and pure like the sun, free from the clouds of the two obscurations. You perceive the whole of reality exactly as it is and so hold the book of transcendental wisdom at your heart. You look upon all beings imprisoned within samsara, enshrouded by the thick darkness of ignorance and tormented by suffering with the love of a mother for her only child. Your enlightened speech, endowed with 60 melodious tones, like the thundering roar of a dragon, wakens us from the sleep of destructive emotions and frees us from the chains of karma. Dispelling the darkness of ignorance, you wield the sword of wisdom to cut through all our suffering. Pure from the very beginning, you've reached the end of the ten pumis and perfected all enlightened qualities. Foremost of the Buddha's heirs, your body is adorned with 112 marks of enlightenment. To Manjugosha, the gentle voice, I prostrate and pray, dispel the darkness from my mind. Oma Rapa Chana
Please fill me with the blazing light of your wisdom and expand my wisdom and intelligence to understand the sutras, tantras, and shastras and gain direct experience of the ultimate truth. This practice is dedicated to the enlightenment of all beings throughout all time and space. Now, I, I think we have the microphone open in the temple. As we keep hearing it online, I don't know if you hear distortion in the temple or not. Oh, darn. Okay. No. I'm covering up part of my text with my sidebar. I should have made the text smaller. So uh, uh, His Holiness uh, begins, uh, well, I don't know if he quite begins, but, but he's, he, he uh, talks quite a lot uh, about, often does, but in this text in particular, uh, in his commentary on the Manjushri Namasangiti, uh, he, he says, develop, he, and he's talking in this talk, in his uh, commentary, he's talking to all of the high yeshes of the Glorpus Act, you can tell. This is not a talk that he gave to the public. This is a talk that he gave to people he expects to know what he's talking about. And I told Lama that I was probably going to give you, uh, overwhelm you with information and enjoin you to practice more and then sing with you. So that's probably how it's gonna go. He said, good, so. <laughs> Um, but his, so we're, we're taking stuff. This is a very profound text. It's one of the most important texts in the tradition. And it's a, a text that uh, most of the American Buddhists are unfamiliar with, it seems. So I keep working on it myself. And, uh, it, Manjushri has become my main practice. So this text is also really important for Kala Chakra. Uh, it's an, it, it, the interpretation of Kala Chakra and the interpretation of this text interpenetrate each other. We'll get into that in a little bit. But the Dalai Lama, he talks about developing an admiration for all of the traditions, by which he means all of the traditions of, the, of Tibet, the four schools, major schools of Tibet, the Nyingma, the uh, Kaju, the Shakya, and the Glukpa. And I, I don't, I'm giving them in the order they started. So. Um, and his commentary is based on that of the second Dalai Lama, uh, with whom he says that he has a really strong connection. And uh, the second Dalai Lama, he feels is one of the greatest of all of the Dalai Lamas. And the Dalai Lama said that since neither Tsongkhapa nor any of Tsongkhapa's major disciples uh, had written a commentary on the Manjushri Namasamgiti, or we're, well, I'll call it, usually I'll call it in this talk, the name Tantra, because that's what the translator called it. Uh, the second Dalai Lama therefore took it upon himself to uh, write the name commentary, a commentary on the name Tantra, I mean. Now His Holiness the Dalai Lama received the transmission of the commentary from Dugo Chensi Rinpoche. Uh, Digo Chente, the Chente lineage began with the great uh, Chente Wangpo, the, uh, the leader really of the Rime activity in Tibet in the 19th century. Uh, if there was a leader, it was him. Uh, and so Digo Chente is, an is, a, is a lineage holder of, uh, in the Chente lineage, but he also uh, when Dijun Rinpoche died, well, when, when, when the Tibetans went into exile, the Dalai Lama said, we, each school needs to have a head. Now, the, the Nyingma didn't used to have a head. The Nyingma was several different uh, major uh, lineages uh, with no head of the school as a, as per se. So, that, so the Dalai Lama said, yeah, you really need a head while we're in exile, somebody who can you know, keep everything together and keep everything functioning. So he appointed Dijim Rinpoche as the head of the Nyingma. And then when Dijim Rinpoche uh, died, he, uh, then the Lamas of the Nyingma sect elected Dogo Chense Rinpoche. And then when he died, they elected Pina Rinpoche, Pema Norbu Rinpoche, the head of the Palyu sect, who, who's the one who gave me the name Tutum Lodra. Anyway, um, the Dalai Lama says, 
uh, and mind you, he's talking to Glukvagesha <laughs> as he tells them, if they feel uncomfortable taking a transmission from another school, that they may not attend this teaching. So he's pretty uh, clear about non-sectarianism. He says he takes teachings from the Sakya, the Kadyupa, and the Nyingma, as well as his own tradition. So it's just a reminder, this, this talk is in that spirit. I work very hard. I, I do have most of my roots are in Nyingma, and, uh, but I've read a, quite a fair amount of Tsongkhapa and, Quite a lot of the Dalai Lama and many other Lugpa writers. So it's not that I'm against uh, any other tradition. I try very hard to maintain that. Uh, and the Dalai Lama says that I, he said, I do this with the underlying belief that all of the traditions, all of the major traditions of Tibet are actually and definitely the pure doctrine of the Buddha himself. So, although he does say that it doesn't mean that all of the teachings and all of the traditions are always authentic or that they're always right or that they're always good. You have to use some discernment, uh, but that during a time when uh, the Buddhist teachings, Buddhist teachings as a whole are kind of under threat from a variety of forces, uh, holding strong sectarian views is uh, an omen of degeneration, he called it. And what's important is not to criticize or to belittle other traditions, but to understand one's own position. I think that's pretty profound. Lama Jimpa really in various ways, he doesn't put it quite like that, but he talks about that a lot. It's like, you need to know what you really, where, where you're at. We, I need to know where I'm really at. So what is the name Tantra? I said a little bit at the beginning. Um, it's a, it's a Tantra written in Sanskrit, it appeared probably around the ninth century AD, but these texts, it's hard to tell when they actually started or came into being. Um, so, His Holiness says that the essence of the text is non duality and non production, non production on a pada, which often is translated. The translator translated non, it as non-production, but it, it's, it can be said beginningless, beginninglessness, you know, infinite time, not, not, not coming into being, always having been. And the non-duality can be interpreted a lot of different ways. And I'm going to not say anything about, I'm not going to interpret non-duality right now because he's going to interpret it a little bit for us a little later. And uh, he says this, Reference to non-duality is only important in terms of the path as a practice. It's, that's the importance of it is that it's a practice because if non-duality were not the basis, the original basis of our minds to begin with, then it would be impossible to achieve it even on the path. So, so there would be no, there's no use. We aren't discussing non-duality as the basis because it just is the basis. The only discussion of non-duality is how it's how it manifests itself on the path. Um, so non-duality in this case, non-duality is be talked about in a variety of ways, and he'll talk, he'll point out a couple of them. There are even more than I have added here, and more than he's talked about. If you start looking at all of the lineages of Buddhism, non-duality can be talked about in a lot of different ways. And then if you start looking at other traditions non-duality becomes sort of such a, a, a wide such a wide term it almost has no meaning but in this case he's talking about non-duality as uh as innate otso in in tibetan otso i'm not sure i don't never could tibet it, uh, pronounce it very well my teacher kempo Gurme trinley named his organization otso dorje nyingpa uh, but he, he didn't usually translate it so that would be most most of the translators I know prefer luminosity. It was translated probably in the early 80s as clear light, probably by Jeffrey Hopkins. And uh, after that, it just kept being repeated. But in my opinion, clear light doesn't really say much. Um, in Sanskrit, the word that was translated as oso is uh, prabhaswara. And that can mean either shiny, brilliant, luminous or clear so 
I guess that's how clear light came came into being. That's more like a coinage. Uh, so th this non-duality is the innate mind of luminosity that all sentient beings have. And as we said in the previous uh, slide, <laughs> uh, if if you didn't if you, if you didn't already have non-duality present, it would not be possible to achieve it. So non-duality is your natural state, our natural state, my natural state. So there's a lot of technicality here, a lot of technical talk, and then he he kind of and he sums it up as. Um, I got my own text covered up. I want to make sure I say the right one. <laughs> but he sums it up as when the potential of this innate luminosity is fully explored, it constitutes achieving Buddhahood. So coming completely in touch with this clear light, luminosity, clarity, however you want to, Prabhashwara, Oso, uh, that's that's the achievement of Buddhahood. And so that's what, with bodhicitta, I've heard people say, it's not bodhicitta, it's because it's not, it's not a, some cat running in, the, in Africa. However, the, uh, what we look at as the I in Sanskrit is pronounced E, so it really is bodhicitta. Otherwise it would be bodhicitta. <laughs> anyway, um, His Holiness says that in Nyingma terminology, this uh, is the non-duality and equanimity of the basis path and result. So once again, you've got the, in, in Yama, they talk about the ground, the path, and the fruit, or, or the basis, the path, and the result. Uh, I know Chagga Rinpoche preferred to call it ground, path, and fruit. And he would correct people who said it otherwise. Um, no, you wouldn't really correct him. You would say, well, that's what you say. I call it fruit. <laughs> um, so once again, we're in this uh, situation where it's always present, always has been present. And although I just saw a text saying that the differences in the systems, the translation is not a difference in the system. A translation is just a difference in the translation. But this non-duality is emptiness uh, as explained in the second turning wheel of the Dharma. This is what the Dalai Lama says. So that's also the, uh, this non-duality is also viewed as the emptiness that's described in the Prajnaparamita Sutra. So this is another way of looking at the same thing. And this innate mind of luminosity is not produced, not created, not developed. But once again, it's into this it's not produced. Um, and he also says that this non-duality and non-production are the essence of this Tantra and the essence of the teachings of highest yoga Tantra. So he talks about this as being the essence and the terminology that's used uh, is fluid. And then he goes on to talk about the great commentary on Kala Chakra, which is the Vimala Prabha, stainless light. Um, and the great commentary, stainless light, says that those who are ignorant of the Manjushri name Tantra are ignorant of non-duality. Interesting statement. Um, it also says that those who are ignorant of non-duality will remain in this, this cycle of existence. And this non-duality should be referred to the innate mind of luminosity, which is the common underlying basis for all methods of achieving enlightenment. So we already here are talking about Kala Chakra while we're talking about uh, the Manjushri Nama Sangeeti. Uh, his Holiness uh, says that in his opinion, 
equanimity between cyclic existence or samsara and nirvana, as they're explained in the Abhisamaya Lankara, which is uh, one of the profound texts of the uh, that interpret the uh, Prajnaparamita teachings according to Maitreya Asanga. Uh, I'm not going to go into that. Only comes uh, to its fullest development on the path. So, on, I mean, so on the tantric path, that 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 the fullest development of uh, this of the equanimity of samsara and nirvana only comes to its fullest development on the tantric path, even though it's described in the sutra path. Uh, this is also explained, he says, in uh, the Dzogchen, Great Completion, uh, Great Perfection. See, there, once again, this is just terminology. Some people translate it Great Completion, some Great Perfection. I prefer Great Completion. The inherent nature of consciousness, uh, which is clarity and knowing, pervades all levels of consciousness, just as sesame oil pervades the entire seed. Innate luminosity pervades all aspects of mind. So this is the Dalai Lama's uh, summary of Dzogchen. And if you uh, develop profound understanding, you will be able to understand the unity and the uniformity of all of these various explanations. So although there are a whole lot of different the way I interpret this is that there are a whole lot of different explanations. There's a whole lot of different terminology. Uh, but if you understand the fundamental basis of the whole thing, they will all make sense to you. Uh, because they're all, they're all right. They just are saying them in different ways. Um, so this, the non-duality of the result, or as Jack Rinpoche would have said, the fruit is the definitive Manjushri. So the, the definitive Manjushri is, uh, I read that, that the definitive Manjushri, Manjushri is Buddhahood. Uh, in this text, Manjushri is referred to by many commentators as the Adi Buddha, the primordial Buddha. So. In the symbolic Manjushri, that is the one that we practice with, that's the one that we visualize, that's, one, that's the one, that's the Sambhogakaya, is the deity, the Sambhogakaya, or often trans translated when, as the enjoyment body or the uh, body of complete resource, although I prefer Sambhogakaya myself. And uh, the symbolic Manjushri is the Sambhogakaya, deity that has arisen from that source of the definitive Manjushri, which you could also say is the Dharmakaya. Uh, as Dalai Lama goes, uh, says very, he he's, he's talks very heartfelt way. You can tell that he feels particularly close to the first and second Dalai Lamas. Um, that would be uh, Gendon Drugpa and Kaltseng Jatso. And sometimes he feels he should call himself Gendon Tenzin, Gendon Tenzin, combining their two names instead of Tenzin Jatso. And he feels uh, fortunate to be blessed and inspired by the lineage of the Dalai Lama. So you can imagine that he would. <laughs> um, and because of this, though, he feels that Dogo Chense was very kind for bestowing the transmission on the second Dalai Lama's commentary, because otherwise it might have been lost to the Kalugpa order. And to commemorate this, and to commemorate this activity, uh, this uh, non sectarian activity, he's giving a commentary on the commentary. So now, now we've actually begun <laughs> the commentary. So, what the, the name Tantra, I can't, I wish I, wish I could see, oh, I'm taking it too much. I'm going to have to speed this up, aren't I? The name Tantra, the origin of the name Tantra is a, a very large Tantra called the Magical Net Tantra, the Maya Jala Tantra, which was 16,000 
stanzas that are the same size as each one of the 162 stanzas, the name Tantra. And if you've read the name Tantra, you know that name Tantra seems pretty long, <laughs> but it's just a drop in the bucket compared with the original Tantra that it came from, which is no longer existing. Um, His Holiness says that the Uttara Tantra explains the Buddha Shakyamuni at once he became enlightened. Uh, oh, I see my edit didn't make it in somehow into the PDF. Anyway, once he made once he became enlightened, uh, after that, without ever departing from the Dharmakaya, the great victor effortlessly manifests his emanations in any sphere to the mature. So he's always present in various forms. So as essentially, uh, uh, Manjushri is Shakyamuni Buddha. Also. And so Shakyamuni Buddha, out of great compassion, took birth as a human in India, even though he didn't need to for himself. He renounced his kingdom when he became aware of suffering, deeply aware of suffering. Shaved his head, which uh, not that big of a deal in my opinion, but gave up his wealth underwent severe penance and undertook other vigorous practices with great commitment, underwent great hardship, great deprivation, you know, finding the path. Uh, and he did all of this to set an example for us. And we shouldn't think that just because that, oh, oh yeah, he went through all that, but, you know, whatever. He didn't really need to. All he needed to do is learn the stuff that we're learning. No. We also, and Milarepa said, for instance, I achieved all of these realizations through many hardships. And so his holiness says that uh, Dharma practitioners must be willing to undergo hardships and sacrifices. You can't just suddenly be happy. Uh, he says one drop of sugar cane juice isn't enough to transform a bitter drink into a sweet one. And you can't overcome an infinity of habituation to delusion with a weak Dharma practice. The Buddha set a, an example for us that a courageous person, by fully realizing uh, suffering, by fully realizing suffering, the first noble truth, there is suffering, uh, can embark on the path with great enthusiasm. But we do need that first noble truth, thing. Eh? All right, so I'm cutting it short because I knew I had to. Um, there's <laughs> too much. I mean, this barely scratches the surface of the beginning of His Holiness's commentary. Uh, um, so uh, there's much more to go through. And if you're not totally bored or if I haven't offended you too much, uh, there's still maybe in a future talk, still cover his uh, what he says about the Four Noble Truths, Second and Third Turning the Wheels of Dharma, uh, Buddha's teaching a Tantra, the various commentaries on the name mantra. There are some following that Garjuna and some and other ones following what they call the 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 what are called the three commentaries, which includes stainless light and the Kala Chakra. Uh, he talks a lot about the about what it means for highest yoga tantra, what the mother and fa father tantra traditions are, and a really important uh, thing, Avam, uh, which is uh, the mystical syllable that begins all sutras and tantras. He talks a lot about that. Uh, uh, generation completion stages, concealed versus explicit tantras, uh, various commentaries, uh, and how it's in, uh, how it all just boils down to the six branch yoga. Vaj it talks about Vajra words, how the tantra was in, as if inscribed by by Vajras, and the uh, then that's before we start going through the name tantra itself. So that all of that is still before he starts going through line by line on the name Tantra. So that's maybe for a future time. So like I said, if you haven't been bored, if I haven't offended you, whatever, we can try it again some other time to go farther through this. It would take probably about five or six more <laughs> times. Um, so let's sing, instead, let's just sing a little bit of it. And you can let me know. I didn't put the music up because I don't. I know music helps some people and probably scares other people. So this is the very beginning of the tantra. And uh, well, 
I'll, I'll do it slowly. One thing to notice, you see the, 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 the uh, syllable, the, the vowels that have a long mark above them. Those are longer in time. Sanskrit, like Greek and Latin, is a uh, quantitative language. So the syllables, there are long and short syllables, which means longer duration and shorter duration. And also another thing that helps guide you through it is if there are two syllables together after a vowel, that vowel is also going to be long. But don't be fooled by things like dh. dh is one consonant in Sanskrit. It's not two. So, or bh is also one consonant. kh is one consonant. Yeah. So we'll get started. Atu Vajradarak Sriman Dudanta Damakach Parach Triloka Vijayi Viro Yurat Kulishe Swarach Vibur Pundari Kakshak Propula Kamalananach Prolalayan Vajruvaram Swakare Namuhur Muhu Burkuti Taranga Pramakair Adnatair Vajrapani Bish Dudant Damakair Virair Virabi Bhatsaru Pibish Ulale ya big swakarai cross puro vadrakoti bish. Prajno payamaha karuna jagada takarai parai. Hirtush sayar mudita kroda vigraha rupi bish. Buddha Kurta Yakara, no, sorry. Buddha Kurta Yakara Natai Sadam Pranata Vigrahai Pranamya Natam Sam Buddham Bhagavan Tam Tatagatam Kirtan Jari Puto Putwa Idam Mahashtito Gratak Maditaya Mamataya Anukam Paya Mevibo Maya Jala Bisam Bodim Yatala Bibuvam Ajnan punk magnanam klesha ya kulache tasam. Itaya savusat wanam manutarapalaptaye. Okay, so that's half of what I've given. So, feedback should we do the other half or should we stop here? Nobody has an opinion. All right, we'll keep going. Let's keep going. Prakasaya to Sambudo Bhagavan Shasta Jug. I completely botched this. Prakasaya to Sambudo Bhagavan Shasta Jug. Guru, that's a, that's a, it has extra syllables in it, and I forgot. Mahasamya tatvajna indraya saya viparah bhagavajna nakayasya mahoshnishyasya kishpate Manjushrijnana sadhvasya jnana murte swayambuvah Gambir artam udar artam mahatam asamam shivam 
Adimadyam Tukalyam Nim Namasam Giti Muttamam Yati Yati Tair Bashita Pudair Bashi Shantayan Angatah Brat Yud Banas Chasam Buddha Yam Bashante Punak Punak Maya Jale Mahatantre Ya Chasmin Sam Pragyate Maha Vajradara Hirshtair Hame Yair Mantra Dari Bish Aham Jai Nam Dara Yishyam Yan Yan Nam Dudashaya Yata Bhavam Yaham Natta Savasam Buddha Guya Dirk Prakashas Yishye Satwanam Yata Saya Vishye Satah Ashe Shaklesha Sanyasya Ashe Ashe Shajnana Hanaye Ewa Madhyesha Guyendro Vajrapanishtatagatam Yutanjali Puto Bhutva Pravakai Yakshito Gratah. So that's the first section of the Tantra. It's called the Request section. And I'm going to use this tr a different translation than I've ever shown before which this comes from uh well let's read it and then i'll t tell you at the end where it comes from then vajradhara endowed with glory supreme among the tamers of those who are hard to tame heroic and victorious over the three worlds mighty lord of indestructible reality king of secret mantra with eyes resembling wide open lotuses present upon a seat in the form of a wide open lotus, repeatedly brandishing a supreme Vajra in his hand. His entourage endowed with the infinite attributes of Vajrapani, rippling frowns of wrath and so forth, heroes acting to train those who are hard to train. They assume a terrifying and heroic demeanor. Their hands brandish Vajras with lips diffused from their pores. They're supreme in acting for the sake of living beings by means of great compassion, discriminative awareness, and skillful means. With thoughts of delight, satisfaction, and rejoicing, endowed with wrathful corporeal forms, as protectors acting by means of Buddha activity, bowing humbly along with their attendants. They paid homage to the Tathagata, the transcendent Lord, the perfect Buddha. Vajrapani then folded his palms together and standing in the presence of the teacher made this following supplication. O all pervading Lord, in order that I may be healed and treated with affection for my sake, may I by whatever means attain manifestly perfect enlightenment through the net of magical emanation so that all sentient beings whose minds are agitated by afflictive mental states and sunk within the swamp of ignorance may acquire the remedy and the unsurpassed fruit. May the perfect transcendent Lord Buddha, the spiritual mentor of living beings, the teacher who, without transgressing the great commitment, knows the real nature and is supreme and knowing the sense faculties and thoughts of sentient beings, reveal the transcendent Lord's body of pristine cognition, along with his great crown protuberance, that's the Ushnishna, Ushnisha, and mastery of words. This Buddha body of pristine cognition is self-originated. It is that of Manjushri's Jnanasattva. The excellent litany of his names is profound in meaning and extensive in meaning. And it is endowed with great benefit, incomparable and quiescent, virtuous in the beginning, middle and end. It is that which was spoken by the Buddhas of the past, which will also be spoken, spoken by those of the future, and which is repeatedly spoken by the perfect Buddhas of the present. Please explain eloquently this litany of names extracted from the great tantra of the net of magical emanation, which was delivered in the form of a song at the insistence of the great Vajradharas, inestimable emanations who retain the secret mantras. O oh, protector, in order that I might become a holder of the secrets to the perfect Buddhas, I shall, I shall steadfastly maintain this tantra 
until living beings attain emancipation. In order to dispel all afflictive mental states without exception and abandon all ignorance without exception, please explain this to all sentient beings in accordance with their distinctive aspirations. Having requested the Tathagata accordingly, Vajrapani, master of secrets, stood in his presence with folded palms and body bowed. So this one is taken, translated by Gurme Dorje uh, in the complete Nyingma tradition from Sutra to Tantra, books 15 through 17, the central Tantras of Maha Yoga, uh, is presented by Cho Ying Tupton Dorje, a great, a great scholar himself uh, of the tradition. Uh, what's interesting here is His Holiness talks about it being highest yoga tantra. Uh, Nyingma doesn't actually talk about highest yoga tantra very much, although they will describe it that way sometimes. Uh, but they further divide, they divide highest yoga tantra into three. And that's uh, Maha Yoga. So Maha Yoga is the lowest of the three. So when they talk about uh, it's Maha Yoga, Anuttara Yoga, and Dzogchen, or Ati Yoga, so, are the th three sections of highest yoga tantra, according to the Nyingma. So when they talk about this tantra, they also talk about how it's interpreted in different ways. And some people interpret, His Holiness says that some people interpret it is a, a yoga tantra, and some people interpret it as a highest yoga tantra. He's going with the inter he's uh, teaching according to the highest yoga tantra interpretation. Within Yingmao, they have the same sort of division. Some interpret it as a Maha yoga tantra, and others interpret it as a Dzogchen tantra. So anyway, that's just to show just how much the same patterns <laughs> tend to repeat themselves. Uh, no matter what the traditions are. And with that, I will stop. And if anybody would like to uh, make any comments, because I don't know if I can answer any questions or not, please, please feel free to. Stop. Oh, Elizabeth, you wanted me to stop? Well, I had too many questions, so I wanted you to stop. I find it interesting that he equated Majrushri with Ajadara. Um, what is the source of uh, the commentary by the Dalai Lama? I couldn't find it. So what is the what source, you what is the that, source? You read, that you read? I have a commentary? PDF of it. I have a PDF of it. Okay. The, of the commentary? Yeah. Where'd you get it? I don't remember. Okay. Well, um, send me a copy, please. Okay. And um, I think you could teach this on Monday evenings um, over a series of eight months to a small group of people. I would definitely be interested to um, go through this. I, I okay, find well, it really I don't know about teaching it, but, but I'll certainly engage it with you. Okay, well, we could read it together, the commentary. Because I think it's real vital for um, Zochen that we're doing and um, other practices. Like yes, Lama the, said to me yesterday, people don't understand how important it is for Kala Chakra. Yeah, and for Kala Chakra, it's important. And um, the, the Vajradhara uh, reference uh, also is important, I think. Well, that's in the Tantra. See, the, well, you know, the... Our ideas that the different Buddhas are different is maybe being what's being challenged. Yeah, well, that's what you know. That's why I'm interested because there's uh, if they're all the same. I've always thought of Manjur Sri in a particular way, and I know that the origin of Manjur Sri is um, sort of magical. So I'm just interested in um, exploring this. Okay, great. I'll see what I'll talk to Lama about that, and maybe you could too. Yeah, I'll I'll send him a text. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Is there anybody in the temple? I can't even tell. Yes, yes, there are people here in the temple. <laughs> I'm sorry, I haven't used the mic a lot because you can hear it's a really bad feedback. So I think it's really perfect how it's been done with you as the 
you know, leading us with some Zen things. I don't know if I'm a some kind of tinny and echoey, so I don't want to say too much, but. Um. No, you sound fine, actually. Oh do, oh, do I? Okay. Just, okay. Okay, we have a question. A question. Maybe. Um, we, we, we're going to, uh, I'm going to ha uh, have a friend here ask a question. We'll try. If it doesn't, it'll be short. Whoever asked the question should sit at Lama's table so we can see you. Oh, it's Sue. You, you know Sue, Dirk. Um, anyway, I have the, um, I'm holding out for this. I'm going to work on this. Anyway, if all things are dependently arisen. Now we have feed, now we have a lot of feedback. So what, I don't know what's different. If all things are dependently arisen, how does that relate to the luminosity, clear luminosity having no um, beginning or end? So how does how does in, interdependent origination relate to the non-production of the clear light or the luminosity? I don't know. I'm sorry. That's I I I I can't I I I could talk about it and but I don't feel comfortable giving any kind of opinion on it because I don't have a clear one. Am I just dodging you? Are you still there, Sue? <laughs> um, you know, you know, this just means you have to come again and do a talk, continue this series because obviously it's not a one-off. This is like a series, and we're having a little trouble here because, like I said, there's just like not just one person, but like a, like four people that had really like sickness and all these sorts of things. And so, so sorry for that because um, there's lots of questions that I'm actually I don't know if I just stand still. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that seems to be working. I know it's so strange. Maybe if you have a question, you come over here and stand here. <laughs> just tell, tell them I said thank you. And I'm still here. <laughs> okay, so I think uh, what Sue is saying is easy for me to translate. Thank you, Dirk. <laughs> Thank I actually you. heard her. <laughs> you can hear what she said. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. So, are there any other questions here? Uh, or comments, but. I, I would like you to continue, Dirk, because I can feel that it's a very, it's really comprehensive, and we've just, just hit the tip of the iceberg, right? There's so much more. So. Yeah, they, they, they wanted to hear the, the tantra, the cat just. Is, are there more questions, or should we uh, end? Or comments? Dirk, Dirk, I'm, uh, could you could you be uh, help us with the closing prayers with screen share? Yep, I'm prepared. <laughs> Except that I have to change which tab. I Dedication. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel, Bodhicitta, that has not arisen, arise and grow. May that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezi Tenzin Jato, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Losang, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. 
Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshwara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manju Shri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land Sedas. Losang Drakpa, I make request at your holy feet. So here we have actually Tsongkhapa being called Avalokiteshwara, Manjushri, and Vajrapani. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I'll stop sharing. And we'll discuss how to proceed with this Tantra at some other time. Bye bye. <laughs> Oh, my.